Well, I told you just a few weeks ago that it's going to get extremely interesting in the run-up to the elections in Tamil Nadu. And one of those first mega twists has happened today. Superstar Rajini Kant, who's often spoken about his political ambitions, almost announced his political parties, almost taken the political plunge many, many times and kept his fans waiting and wondering for now years together actually has finally confirmed today Rajini Kant has confirmed that he will be launching his party come Pongal New Year and then they will be fighting the elections next year in Tamil Nadu he's also claimed he's going to form the government but at the end of the day, it's actually confirmed now and it's going to drastically change uh, political fortunes for a lot of people or a lot of equations the way they have been worked upon so far in the state of Tamil Nadu. Now, it's now or never. That's the big message that's come from Rajni Khan. Before we go into this conversation, I want to play an excerpt of the comment that he made today. This is the comment that we got from Rajni Khan as he finally announced his plans to get into politics and fight elections. Listen. Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, Matha India, Nadu, Vanda Chhe. Adi Nichiwa, Adi Nadako, Arsiel Matra, Achi Matra. Yippo illa na, yappo illa. Matu ko, yalla tiyo matu ko. So obviously, to begin with, he is going to announce his own political outfit. Obviously, he's going to be fighting these elections. There's been wide speculation about his connections, his closeness to the BJP, if he is going to be put forward by the BJP, if he is going to tie hands with them. Nothing of that has been said. But remember, the BJP itself, just a 10 days ago, joined hands officially with AIADMK, announced a pre-poll alliance with AIADMK, when Amit Shah himself was in Chennai. Now, the AIADMK leaders have responded they have welcomed Rajini Khan's move in fact when Deputy Chief Minister Opanir Selvam was asked whether they would be willing to form an alliance with with Rajini Khan he said well anything is possible in politics so you don't know we don't know what's going to happen but before we go to the big questions I want to go across to Aarti Subramaniam. Aarti, because I haven't said it enough number of times, I'll say it a few more times in, in the conversation today. Finally, Rajni Khan has made this announcement. And we say that because he's just teased people and promised people for so long. He's, uh, you know, had his on and off brushes with politics since the 90s. Sanvi, it's almost like a movie that's been in pre-production stage for uh, over two decades now. And when Rajnikanth said it's now or never, many people almost heaved a sigh of relief because it's become so much speculation that everybody thought it was going to be never ever that he's joining politics. Especially because, as you were saying, he's been dropping so many hints. There have been so much of will he, won't he, right back from 1996. And let's just try and quickly encapsulate that political journey of Rajnikanth. Now, in 1996, he did uh, what many didn't expect him to do. He openly came out and backed the DMK and the Tamil Manila Congress, which was a breakaway faction of the Congress party. He made a statement that was uh, a huge, huge uh, deal back then when he said, if Jalalitha's voted to power, even God can't save Tamil Nadu. The AIDMK was dropped in that election and many attributed it to Rajni Khan's statement and openly backing, uh, openly backing the DMK alliance in that election. Since then, he's been much sought after a man, of course, of his, the kind of hysteria that he evokes, the kind of following that he has. Obviously, any political party would want to have him uh, doing their bidding. In 2002, he went on a fast openly supporting the Kaveri movement. Now, Kaveri is an issue which is extremely resonant in Tamil Nadu. It's an emotive issue. And he went on a fast asking Karnataka government to release the Kaveri waters along with many others. Now, skip to 2004. Ahead of the Lok Sabha polls, very interestingly, he did a change. He flipped his position and backed AIDMK, the 
AIDM ke BJP alliance. In fact, it was at that time where he rationalized that decision, saying that the BJP and the AIDM are promising interlinking of rivers. It's an issue he cared about. That's why he's supporting them. But nevertheless, uh, the AIDM and BJP was completely dropped in that election. They were routed, and after that, there was almost a political silence from Rajnikanth, where he didn't really back anybody. He didn't speak of anything. In 2008, interestingly, he was asked by a fan, "What are you going to do? Are you going to join politics?" And he said, "It would be foolish." to think that uh, one is successful in politics due to hard work or experience. It's all a question of time and circumstances. If the time is not right, nothing can help. That's what he said in 2008 in a larger, in, in largely non-committal stance as he's been known to be for many years. In 2014, he met um, Narendra Modi just ahead of the elections. That set so many tongues wagging because a lot of people then assumed that he is going to join the BJP or he has he's supporting the BJP, something that he still hasn't been able to get rid of. And he has a personal equation with the Prime Minister and him meeting the Prime Minister, of course, set off that. He also, in 2014, met Jailalita after she came out of prison. Uh, somebody who's had a very complicated relationship, incidentally, somebody who's also his neighbor in Post Garden. So that meeting happened. There was a lot of speculation once again, but he did not publicly back anybody. In 2017, in December, uh, that statement came on the 31st of December 2017, where he finally announced he was going to make uh, a political splash. But post that, nothing happened. A lot of people thought in 2019 he would contest or he would at least announce some seats that his party is contesting. But between 2017 and 2020, there's been a complete lull which led many people to question his seriousness and commitment to politics. In 2019, just Ahead of the Lok Sabha polls, he said he's not going to be backing any party and he, the people should vote for only that party that does well for Tamil Nadu's water crisis. But after the huge mandate that the BJP got, he was very overwhelming in his praise of Narendra Modi, once again setting that speculation. But it was only towards the end of December 2020 when perhaps a lot of people had lost hope that Rajnikanth was even going to enter electoral politics in any way that he has said, I am finally taking that plunge. It is now or never. What is the nature of his political party? What is their ideology, their vision? Hopefully when he says on the 31st of December 2020, he'll have more information to share. But one thing is fairly certain, even though he might not have a huge perhaps electoral impact that this is going to set a lot of the other political parties in mm. Tamil Nadu back to the drawing room to try and figure out their strategy. Okay, thanks so much, Aarti, for putting that in perspective, uh, really. And let me just now straight away take it across to our, uh, you know, panelists who are joining us right now, Mr. T.S. So the uh, political analyst uh, joining us this evening, Shri Ram Shishadri, also a political analyst, Javed Ansari, journalist, joins us this evening, Vinod Selvam, president for the BJP Youth Wing in Tamil Nadu with me this evening, and C uh, CR Saraswati, spokesperson for AMMK, uh, the Shashikala TTV faction with us this evening, formerly with AIA DMK. Let me start with uh, CR Saraswati. What does this do to the political landscape and to the plans that AIA DMK and the BJP had uh, for the Tamil Nadu elections? Uh, CR Saraswati, are you able to hear me? Okay, I don't think she can hear us right now. We're going to try and uh, patch that line again one more time. But uh, uh, Mr. T.S. Sudhir, let's start with your views on what does it mean for the elections next year, this Rajnikanth's finally him entering politics and contesting elections. One of Rajnikan's very famous punch dialogues is Leta Vandalam Latesta Varve, meaning to say that even if I'm late, I will be the latest when I actually arrive. But it seems that he has kind of left his arrival to the very end, almost like doing a Mahindra Singh Dhoni, his good friend, the captain of the Chennai Super Kings. But Mahindra Singh Dhoni also, towards the fag end of his career, has was finding it very difficult to score at a brisk pace if he left things to the end. And that may pretty much be the case even with Rajnikanth. Is there really a vacuum in Tamil Nadu at this point in time? I'm not so sure. You have two strong Dravidian parties. Yes, the AIDMK is suffering from an anti-incumbency at this point in time and the DMK would obviously fancy its chances. But what kind of a dent, what kind of an impact Rajni can, can do at this point in time, one is not too sure because three years before, in December 2017, he announced his plunge into politics. 
not much work in terms of building up a cadre, in terms of raising public issues, uh, going in for edu going into agitation mode. Rajni Kant has really not done much. In fact, he has done at least four to five movies during this three-year period. So he has been busy as an actor, not so much as a politician. So this is yet another instance where he's saying that, yes, I am going to take the plunge. I am going to contest the 2021 elections. But I do feel that there may be still a twist. We don't know because in March 2020, he had announced that he will not be contesting the elections himself. Does it mean that he will not be the CM face of his party? What will be his party called? And what kind of a relationship it will have with the AIDMK, the BJP, which have entered into an alliance, that remains a big question mark, given his friendship with both with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and also with the BJP. So even though Rajnikanth has made the first announcement, a lot of question marks still remain because of the many things that the public of Tamil Nadu do not know as yet. Okay, Mr. Sriram Shushadri, let's talk about, you know, one aspect of what T.S. Sudhir also raised, which is um, uh, his closeness to the BJP, uh, similarity in views uh, in, in many aspects, uh, the fact that he's met Prime Minister Modi so many times. Uh, uh, and now that the BJP has uh, joined hands with the AIADMK, does it look like a three-way team-up that can take place pre or post-election? I think Rajinikanth keeps talking about honest and spiritual uh, politics. Okay, spiritual politics is not new to Tamil Nadu. MGR practiced that in a big way, though he is part of the Dravidian uh, formation. Uh, so it is not new to Tamil Nadu what he is talking about. But uh, between BJP and ADMK, what mm -hmm. now that they have aligned, and if Rajinikanth does not join this alliance, then he is going to be helping DMK. Uh, in a big way to win easily because what Rajinikanth gets a vote is a uh, anti-DMK vote that has been going to ADMK all along. So what Rajinikanth will be splitting is anti-DMK vote and then weaken ADMK alliance as such as of now. And Rajinikanth also will compensate the negative uh, vote uh, percentage that uh, Kamala Hassan and uh, Seeman, who is another uh, you know uh, Tamil Nadu politician, uh, so Kamala Hassan splits pro-DMK vote in urban uh, constituencies and Seaman splits about 3 to 4 percentage of rural votes for of pro-DMK. So if Rajinikanth contests alone and not part of VADMK BJP alliance, then the talk of spiritual politics, I think he is giving in to uh, DMK on a platter. So in my opinion, uh, you know, he may be thinking about all these uh, why, why, when he announces but his runway is too short, unless or otherwise he has already done the registration of his party, etc. Or if he's going to start that only in the end of December, early January, normally takes about 90 to 120 days. And then he doesn't have time to popularize his uh, you know, party or his uh, party symbol. So unless otherwise he has started that uh, ball rolling long back and then uh, kept everything ready, then, uh, you know, there is an alternate available. He can acquire a party that is already registered and then, you know, do that uh, ba backdoor entry. But I don't think he will do that but in is, my opinion. Is that needed, Mr. Shashadri? Uh, pardon me asking this question. Is that needed for Rajni Khan? Aren't, you know, four months enough uh, for people to figure out what Rajni Khan's party symbol is going to be, considering the kind of fan following he has in the state? See, imagine uh, all along last 50 years, DMK and ADMK has a large cadre base. So all his political, uh, all his uh, uh, yeah. star dome fans does not mean converting to votes. So which means he has to popularize his symbol, popularize his, uh, you know, uh, party name. Yes, he is a big, uh, you know, uh, personality, very tall personality in Tamil Nadu and then doesn't need any introduction. But when it comes to electoral politics, when it comes to voting and casting a ballot, you know, people do go by the uh, symbols. And then, you know, both two leaves and the uh, rising sun are the most prominent symbols, uh, which covers about at least about 55 to 60 percentage of voter base, committed voter base. So what he is going to uh, do with them? So he needs time to run it, though with his popularity, he can run this pretty easily. We can popularize it. Unless and otherwise he has done it already. Why I am saying that? If he starts it in the, uh, you know, in uh, 2021, then he is going to get his symbol allocated only by about end of March. Then he will have a very, very short period of time to popularize 
his uh, symbol and party name. So I believe that he has done all these homework before because he has very good advisors, uh, you know, who has been advising him for last 23 years. So he would have done done all these, is my uh, belief. Okay, Mr. Javed Ansari, your view on this? I mean, of course, uh, having a large fan base is one thing, uh, and having a very strong political cadre is another. But Tamil Nadu is a state where many superstars have actually entered politics, so they're they're not new to this. Uh, you know, how do you think this is going to change uh, the story for the state elections next year? Well, for one thing is certain, it will certainly create, uh, generate a certain amount of buzz, attraction. Uh, but I'm not so sure if there is space in the bipolar political turf of Tamil Nadu for 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 a late entrant like Mr. Uh, Mr. Rajnikanth. Popular as he is, there is no denying the fact. You can't contest that fact. But you know, for him to be able to translate his fan following into votes. I'm not so sure. Uh, um, Tamil Nadu is also very polarized in terms of caste. So where does Mr. Rajnikanth fit into all this? I'm not so sure. Uh, Rajnikanth might, might at the, by the end of this all, Rajnikanth might just come to the conclusion that it's easier to deliver it on, on, the, uh, on the silver screen rather than on the political field. This is a totally different ballgame. The only other person film star who managed to create a convert his stardom into fan falling into 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 a support base was was NTR at the age of 59 uh, soon after I mean, within months of taking the plunge he, he he went on to become the chief minister of the state but whether he can emulate NTR I'm not so sure somebody like uh, Sudhir might be able to throw more light on this he's uh, you know better equipped to handle that but sitting mm -hmm. away in Delhi my own experience tells me that he'll, you know, once the fizz goes down and once uh, once the rubber hits the road, once okay. electioneering starts, he 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 realize that it's not as easy as he thought it would be. Okay, uh, let me ask uh, C.R. Saraswati if she agrees. Is there space, C.R. Saraswati, for somebody like Rajni Khan to enter politics now in in in, in such a uh, feisty election, uh, yeah. Yeah. See, anybody can start a party. It is their own wish. Nobody can say no for it. But after Mr. Radhigan starting a party in January, what the view is going to say? We have to wait and see. What is going to say people? What is going to, uh, the way he's going to behave in politics, whatever it is, we welcome it because anybody, as I said, they can start the party. But people have to decide. Let us wait and see what is going, what are the words he's going to say after become a real political leader. So let us wait and see till January. <laughs> hmm. So now we can't say you. Of course, he has announced it today. December 31st will be the day for him to become a political leader officially and is going to say his party name and whatever it is. Then what is going to be for him? Then what people think? Everything people has to decide, Ma. Only people has to decide. We can't we can sit and say some of our ideas, but still in the election ground, people will decide whom they want. So let's wait and see what's going to happen for us. But one thing in uh, Tamil Nadu is today. Well, let's, let's, you, I know you are saying let's wait and see what his views are going to be. Yeah, uh, let me just actually no, take a look at some of the comments that he has made because he's been talking about entering politics yeah. for a while. Yeah. Uh, when it came to the Kaveri water dispute, he was very clear that the Karnataka has to obey the orders of the Supreme, uh, Supreme yeah. Court Center. Will have to yes. face the wrath of Tamil Nadu if the Kaveri board is in setter. That's what he said on the Tutikor yes. and Sterilite issue as well. He took a very uh, interesting view, very bl blamed antisocial elements for actually the deaths and asked the state go government to come down hard on these troublemakers. On Sabri Malai, he, he has said that every ta uh, temple has its time-honored ritual. So he's taken a very clear stand even on that issue. On Jallikatta, he's been very clear when he said <coughs> it should be upheld to uphold the traditions of the Tamil culture. Uh, on the Salem Expressway, which was a big issue, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, he said that the, uh, it will, he backed it and he said it will increase the employment opportunities. He's come out today and said he's going to uh, give a clean, honest, transparent, corruption-free government. So he has given a bit of sense in, in the past couple of years, C.R. Saraswati, of what his style of Clearly. politics is going to be. He gave an exhaustive speech yes. at yes. one of the events at the MGR's anniversary last year. One thing I'm telling you, in Tutukudi issue, the sterilite issue, 
there is no anti elements at all the people were uh, fighting for their own rights they, they don't want sunlight to be there because they're losing their lives for the last so many years there is no anti element at all till today we are asking this present government we formed the government everybody knows about it after zamma's demise this edapadi palnichami government has been formed by my leader mr tt vidyanagar and my respectable chinnamma mr sashikla ma'am that's i don't want to go back again because everybody knows it of course they are not loyal for that just leave it but in tutukodi what happened is who asked shoot the people innocent people have died there's no anti element at all they were fighting with the children with the family with the mother with the father everybody they don't want starlight where the anti elements came there and who asked them to shoot the people innocent people so many people died mm. without the knowledge of chief minister it mm. have been done till today this present government they are kept a commission inquiry commission but who has given the order without the knowledge of chief minister or the deputy collector or the uh, secretary do you think it can happen nothing and another thing jallikattu is it's a people's fight people join together and said jallikattu must be in tamil nadu it is our traditional game that credit goes to people it's a public um, in victory another thing i'm telling you mr as mr rajnikanth's view of course something he has spoken already about in political line he has uh, said his issue and his uh, i mean his views and everything but as a political leader let him come to the ground hmm come let him full fledged himself as a political leader hmm. let him let come me get to in the mr ground. Get, let me get in uh, vinod selvam again uh, as well vinod selvam the lot of uh, speculation even before rajnikanth's announcement was that what if the bjp helps him and together the bjp and uh, rajni khan try and make a mark but now you've already tied hands with aia dmk is there a space left for another alliance uh firstly we welcome uh, mr rajni khan's entry into politics uh mostly because if you have seen in the past rajni khan is one of those individuals who has been very honest in his opinions and he has always welcomed the decisions which have been right for the country which have been brought about by our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi mm. let it be the issue of demonetization let it be the issue of article 370 rabrigation in kashmir he has always stood up for what is right and he has voiced his opinions very boldly and very honestly similarly even when these uh, uh, revolts were happening in tamil nadu he came out and said a very nice statement that unnecessarily revolting for everything will make the state a graveyard so he was not always going with the popular opinion but he was bold enough to speak the truth and he has always stuck by certain he has uh, uh, backed certain moves which have benefited the country uh, which were taken by shri narendra modi which were opposed by political parties like the dravidia dmk in in tamil nadu so um, in that sense rajnikanth as entry into politics is going to create a lot of buzz and also what is very interesting to note is that after 50 years there is going to be space for political parties especially for bjp and mr rajnikanth's newly formed political party which believe in nationalism and spirituality because rajnikanth has repeatedly spoken about the idea of spiritual politics and we all know he's a very nationalistic person so uh, it's a it's a vast sea of a change from yeah. uh, the parties like dmk which are, which have always advocated atheism in tamil nadu and who tried to split the state in terms of uh, by 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 religion so i think rajnikanth's entry will definitely be good whether we are going to be allies or not is something which time will mm. decide but whatever it is today the space in tamil nadu is going to be between political parties which believe in nationality and spiritual but you've not answered my questions you've not answered my you. question vinod selvam you've right. not answered today, your my question today the alliance between it's not NDA about what very, you think of the rajnikanth's politics the nda is very strong today in tamil nadu as already confirmed the nda is very much intact Rajnikanth has only announced today that his political party will be announced on the 31st December. So let him form his political party. Let his ideologies be released as is in the open. Let us understand what he wants to offer to the people. And after that, I am sure our party will be in a better position to take a call on on what sort of alliances to uh, have set for the 2021 election, which will be best for the people of Tamil Nadu. does this uh, mr t s sudhir then dent um or make things more difficult for dmk would that be one political party uh, that finds it now tougher this election season no no on the contrary 2021 if we are to take the 2020 lok sabha elections as some kind of an indicator 
2021 will be DMK's election to lose. Uh, right. And as uh, an earlier panelist pointed out, I think it was Mr. Sheshadri, that uh, most of the, if Rajni can't actually eats into anyone's vote, it will be the NDA vote of the BJP and the AIDMK because people see him as having some kind of an affinity with the BJP. Two couple of uh, two points out here. Javed Ansari pointed out what NTR did. Now, NTR came in 1982-83 when there was a very visible vacuum in Andhra Pradesh and he exploited it. Similarly, MGR tapped into the anti-DMK, anti-Karnanadi sentiment prevalent at that point in time. Chiranjeevi could not be a success in Andhra Pradesh because there was no vacuum existent. And same is going to be the problem with Rajnikant because there is no political mm. vacuum existing in Tamil Nadu at this point, which he can really exploit. And the other point is about how he has been harping on change, that he wants to bring about change and that the time to bring about change is right now and it will be now or never. Now, if he's indeed interested in bringing about change, he obviously cannot ally with the ruling party, which has been in power since... Uh, for the last 10 years, 9 years now and 10 years uh, in 2021. He cannot go with the ruling party. So what options does it leave Rajnikant with? He will have to go on his own. And in that case, whatever votes he gets from the youth or any other sections of society, because he will not really have a caste formation which he could really tap into for that community vote. So in that sense, whatever votes he um, uh, gets, it will essentially be the anti-AIDMK, the anti-incumbency vote, which may also go into Rajnikanth's kitty. So in that sense, he may end up hurting the uh, BJP AIDMK alliance much more than the DMK alliance. The DMK does not really have reason to worry as a result of this, except for the fact that after December 31st, in fact, starting from today itself, there will be that perception that will be created that Rajnikanth is going to be the CM candidate who is going to take on MK Stalin. And it is that perception on the ground that the DMK and MK Stalin will have to fight. Okay, there is this perception on ground, but the one thing that you, you've uh, now said twice, Mr. Sudhi, let me take that point and take it to Sri Ram Shishadri about a uh, the lack of a political vacuum. A couple of years ago, everybody said, well, in, in the after, you know, yeah, after losing Jail Alita and Karuna Nidhi, there was a big political vacuum, especially in terms of key big personalities who could join the crowds in the same way that these two leaders did. Uh, we, we had, uh, uh, you know, uh, Open Ear Selvam and Palaniswami fighting for power. Shashikala, who had been sent off to jail, uh, though she, she might return now. Uh, Stalin, who was still uh, not really that convincing as a big party leader. Alaygari, who, who had already been sidelined. In, in such a scenario, Mr. Sriram Shishadri, do you feel that now things have evolved since then? And, and then that it is back to people actually choosing between the leaders of only these two parties? Uh, yes, the vacuum that was created by uh, Jayalalta and uh, Mr. Karnanadi's uh, demise uh, is probably is not uh, you know, filled by uh, neither of them, like uh, OPS or uh, uh, Stalin. But at least, uh, you know, the level playing field has been reset. Uh, you know, neither of the party is a loser uh, because of uh, the uh, demise of both the tall leader. And I don't think Rajinikanth can uh, fill that any, any other space that is left out. But Rajinikanth does have a space to operate upon one, uh, which is a nationalistic agenda. Tamil Nadu for the last 50 years have seen the Dravidian agenda, which is uh, more or less not nationalistic. So ADMK to a major extent uh, do not have a separatist mm. uh, you know, mindset, but DMK does have a lot of separatist mindset and uh, minority appeasement and then bashing Hindus, uh, those sort of ideologies they have been harping upon. So Rajinigan does have a new perspective that he can bring upon uh, in the Tamil Nadu politics if he can make a big influence in the next four or five months and then create a nationalistic mindset or attract people who have this nationalistic mindset. Post-Congress defeat in 1967, Congress lost the opportunity to revive itself even though they had a lot of time to revive. Uh, they somehow became a subordinate party to uh, either of uh, either ADMK or DMK. And they couldn't do that, bring that nationalistic mindset into the electoral politics of Tamil Nadu. BJP is actually trying to fill that gap and then bring that nationalism into Tamil Nadu in a big way. I think Rajini Gant, uh, you know, is also has the space to occupy that and then be a change between the two Dravidian yeah. movements. Uh, Vijay Gant tried that in 2011, but unfortunately, 
all the votes that he got he missed it uh, when he start when he started playing the usual politics of the dravidian movement politics uh, post that i think rajinikanth should not fall into the same trap uh, of what vijay gand did and then needs a credible alternate between the two uh, you know dravidian parties i think he has a space to operate and hope that he will actually bring in his ideology uh, when he when he talks about it i think his ideology is very clear it is nothing more than a uh, honest spiritual and secular secular is a word everybody uses whether they follow it in reality mm. or not but at least honesty and uh, spiritualism mm. in politics i think you know nobody talks about it post mgr uh, and jailalta practiced it but you know more, more so uh, mgr had a soft uh, you know hindutva and then jailalta also uh, practiced soft hindutva but uh, more of spiritual Uh, politics uh, they they did uh, you know practice so i think rajinikanth may bring in that flavor much more and then bring add that with a nationalistic agenda i think he can bring in some amount of hope in uh, mm. you know changing the electoral politics in tamil nadu so un- uh, i mean unless and until mr javed ansari he actually joins and uh, you know uh, with the nda um does it look like he's kind of missed the bus maybe he should have made this announcement earlier now the uh, equations and the alliances have already been sealed and settled and there isn't too much space for him to you know uh, or or the a bigger possibility of a bigger pie for him but certainly if he does indicate a willingness i'm sure the bjp more than the idmk would be very happy to accommodate him obviously he cannot hope to get the lion's share of the seats because these are two set parties and the bjp lets it's now evident more than ever before that the bjp realizes that this is the time to increase its, its footprint all over the country bjp not be may not be aiming to come to power in the immediately in the next elections in tamil nadu but it certainly wants to become a major player and it cannot become a major player if it contests 10 15 or 20 seats so the bjp will want a large share of seats the idmk two will being the the larger party or the largest party in the alliance would want the large share so how much will be left for mr rajnikanth i am not so sure at the same time if mr rajnikanth contests on his own does he have the wherewithal he may have the resources but he does he have the organizational structure to support Uh, a, a, an election campaign in just four months. I am not so sure. So, he, uh, if he contests alone, he might end up playing the. He will not achieve much other than the fact that he might end up being the the spoiler. Uh, it's it's one thing to be to command a lot of support uh, fan following. It's quite another to convert it into politics. And and uh, my colleague Sudhir made a very significant point that you know there is no vacuum. and uh, in in a in a bipolar polity where does this third party suddenly spring out of the mm. blue and carve a niche for itself he has his work cut out for him oh that's a yeah i completely agree with you but that, does he become a third party in a three way fight or does he actually become somebody who gathers some amount of votes and then strengthens one versus the other uh, that perhaps could be the end game here uh, wh- one has learned o- o- uh, over the years uh, that when the bjp decides to go in uh, and take a state election seriously uh, they start planning well in advance their all of their gambles paid off for them as they emerged the strongest candidate in bihar as well and i don't think we should underestimate what they're going to be doing in tamil nadu as well amit shah has already paid a visit sealed the alliance with the aia dmk both parties seem to be very welcoming of the idea of rajni kant uh, stepping into the political arena even if it is for now to say he is going to announce his own party the dmk doesn't want to talk about it right now they're not even on this panel because they didn't want to be a part of this panel uh, so we have to wait and watch how it progresses for me suffice to say it is going to be a very exciting election season uh, what will stalin do and what will kamal hassan do are also something that we will have to wait and watch in the coming weeks but a big pongal gift for the fans of rajnikanth is definitely uh, on its way because he's announced that on december uh, by december 30th 31st they will make the announcement and launch this party in january so let's wait and watch how it progresses thank you so much for joining us on this conversation